All right, so I was asked to do a quick video of how I got the Runcam Swift Micro installed on my Baby Hawk using the factory VTX. I love this Baby Hawk. Absolutely love it. The only thing that I found lacking was the camera, especially behind my house and changing lighting conditions. Uh, there's a very big transition between a light, bright area to behind our house where it's shaded. And when you transition between that, I was getting pretty much an entirely black picture uh, when I faced that direction. And it gave me almost zero confidence to fly the thing because I knew if I was flying towards me, I couldn't see anything. So I decided to try to get the Runcam Swift Micro installed because it's the CCD sensor with the wide dynamic range and all the goodness that should handle light transitions. So long story short, it works amazing. I will not go back, and here I will show you how I got it installed. Um, get a little close up here. You can see I butchered the plastic on this frame here, trying to get it in. It does not fit normally, so I was cutting and using a soldering iron to melt the plastic so it does not look good. I will probably 3D print a mount for it at some point. Apologize for the dog in the background barking. Um, See, I'll 3D print something, but right now this works great, and it's got the two screws on the side, so actually you can remove this camera very easily without pulling any other plastic off. Uh, what you'll see here is how I've ran the wires. I've compressed them in through the case just so they don't get anywhere near the, the props. So I've got my power, ground, and video. The power and ground for this, the Runcam Swift Micro can take from five volts up to, I believe, 36 volts. So I'm just running the power and ground directly off of the battery leads. And then the video comes out of the camera and into the factory VTX. I'll show you how that's done. And then the VTX is powered just like it normally is from the factory with uh, five volts off of one of the UART ports from the flight controller. Now there absolutely is a trick that took me forever to figure out probing with a multimeter um, on how to get the VTX to power on when you remove the original camera and I'll show you that and hopefully that saves you some time if you want to go ahead and do this modification. Um, also I got this Runcam Micro Swift from Got Heli RC. Um, I'll put a link in the description. I think they're sold out now. It was not provided for review. I don't get any free stuff so I got an email notification they had it in stock and bought it right away so that's why have one early so I'm gonna go ahead and pull this thing out and you'll see if I just take these two screws out on the sides and I just took a soldering iron and melted a hole in for the, the screws to go through screws pop out. These things are kind of just compression fit in. And there's a little bit of sticky tape that's holding the VTX to the back of the camera. And there you go. So the whole little module comes out. Here's my connector. Got a pointer here. So here's the connector for the run cam and then here's the factory connector for the VTX. So I don't know the full pin out, but I can make an educated guess. So obviously positive in ground. I do not know what this middle pin is for because it was blank from the factory, but originally from the factory, um, I believe this second to last pin on the left here was video out from the camera. And then on the baby hawk from the factory, it was just a a loop of wire that came out of this one and into this one. So the final pin here is the video input to the VTX. So I've just run my video output from the camera down into this final pin to the left here on the VTX. And that worked perfectly fine. Now the trick to this is, and I'll go ahead and separate it here just so you guys can see this. I'll tell you what, I'm going to disconnect these two connections. 
All right, just to break it down. So here's the whole little package using some 3M VHB tape just to secure the factory VTX to the back of the run cam. Uh, but I will pop this off. So what you will notice, hopefully I don't screw this up. When this thing is mounted to a to the camera, it's got two pin headers that are soldered between the two circuit boards. It's got a four pin and a three pin. The four pin is right over here, and I'll talk about this little loop of wire here in a second because that's the magic to make it work. And there's a three pin connector over here. As far as I can tell, these three pins are just for stability so that it's mounted on. I, I was not able to find any connectivity or functionality on these three pins over here. Everything appeared to be on these four pins. So what it looks like happens is when this is connected up to the camera, which would sit on this side of it, the bottom pin is five volts coming in from the connector down here. So it goes into five volts. That five volts then goes into the camera and then this second pin up, I believe, and I hope you can see this, this is so tiny. The second pin up on the four pin connector, I believe is the signal or the video signal from the camera back into the, the VTX. The third is the video ground wire. And the fourth is the power ground for the VTX. I could have this wrong, um, on the exact order, but what I do know is that once you disconnect this from the camera, clip the leads to remove it, when you plug in five volts here, this VTX no longer powers up. And what you will have to do, because it, it, I guess it's routing the voltage through the camera, what you have to do is you have to run a little jumper here from the bottom pin of the four pin header here up to the top pin. And so this just closes the circuit. So it's five volts in, closes the circuits over to then power the VTX and then out your, your ground connection on the, the lead. If you don't run this little jumper here, uh, your VTX won't power once you clip the connections to the, to the factory camera. So I had to do this, put this on to make it work. And once I put that on, connect in the connector down here and then the connector to the camera just like I showed before and everything works perfectly you get the switching between 25 and 200 milliwatts um, I have it unlocked so I get all the 40 channels and everything works just great and the video is much 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 better especially in changing lighting conditions so it's a worthwhile mod and I, I highly suggest if that's an area of frustration if you can get your hands on one of these little run cam micro swifts uh, that it performs pretty amazing the one downside is that it does not come with the OSD cable I think many reviewers of it have mentioned that it does not come with the the cable to change any of the settings on the camera so you'll have to kind of make one up or purchase one from Runcam or get another Runcam product that comes with one in the box but out right out of the box this thing performs unbelievably well so anyway that's how i did it if you have any questions let me know if you want to correct me on these pinouts let me know oh one thing i guess lesson learned is before i realized this when i clipped the i just took a set of wire cutters and cut the leads between the camera on either one of these headers uh leave a little bit of room uh i trim these down flush before I realized I needed this little jumper, so it was pretty tight trying to get solder to stick to just the little tiny bit of of the pin sticking up out of there. I probably could have done a better job, but this seems to be working just fine. Anyway, like I said, any questions, comments, let me know. And I'll show you here at the end of the video some difference between flying in the same area. Unfortunately, I didn't do the same path but I'll show you the same kind of area, uh, how it, the original camera handled lighting conditions and now how the micro swift handles it.